All right, so here we are on 13.1 on area between curves. So we're going to learn about area between two curves as well as the applications, which is income distribution. So in this section, we're interested in using the definite integral to find the actual area between a curve and the x-axis or the actual area between two actual curves. Now, these areas are always non-negative quantities because area measurement is never negative. So we're going to look at between you know this curve f of x and this curve g of x. We're looking for that positive area here. Okay, so area between curves, consider the area bounded by the f of x and g of x, where f of x is greater than g of x is greater than zero, and it's also equal to, greater than or equal to, and a has to be less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b. So we're going from some a over here to some b over here, okay? And so again, we're looking, this one's bigger than this one, and it's bigger than zero. Now, the area between the two is going to be basically the area under the f of x minus, which is kind of the blue all the way to the thing, the whole thing, minus the area under g of x, which is kind of the peach color here. So we take the whole thing minus the peach, and we get the blue. Okay, And the way we're going to do that is we're going to integrate from a to b f of x dx minus a to b of g of x d of x. And so basically we're finding the area under this curve, minusing the area under this curve, and so that's what it's going to be. And if we want to write it into one integral, we can do this, or if we want to keep it as two separate, that's how we're going to do that. All right, so this gives us theorem one, which says the area between two curves, if f and g are continuous and f of x is greater than g of x, we always want to put the f of x first, uh, then over the interval a to b, closed interval, then the area bounded by y equals f of x and y equals g of x for a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b is given by exactly by this equation. So we have the integral of a to b of f of x minus g of x. Again, f of x always has to be greater than g of x. If it's not, then what we have to do is we're going to have to split the integral into pieces, and we'll see that in a couple of examples. All right, so here we have, we find the area of the bounded by f of x equals x squared plus 1 and y equals 0. And we're going to go from negative 1 up to 3. So uh, one thing we should probably do on all these cases, if we don't know what it looks like, we should probably plot these. So let's plot this one. So we have, you know, x squared plus 1, which should be just a parabola, you know, moved up one. And let's turn that one off. And let's do the other one, which is going to be the y equals 0. And so let's do that. And so we were going, actually, we better probably put it to where it's from and two. So let's go from minus five to five by one. And let's go from, I don't know how much we need to go, but from maybe a minus 20 to 20 by five. Okay. And so that's what it looks like. So we're going from minus one, which is uh, probably around here up to, you know, around three. So we're going looking at the area where the blue is the upper one, which is our x squared plus one, and y equals zero is our lower one. So we can just use our equation and put it in. And so we're just going to have the integral, and we're going to go from negative one to three of x squared plus one, and then we're going to subtract off zero, and then dx. Okay. Well, this is pretty easy. Now, if we drop all the parentheses, it's, we'll subtract zero. We're just going to get the x cubed over three. Then we have plus x. That's nothing there, so it won't do anything. And we're evaluating that from negative one to three. So if we plug in three, that's going to be 27 divided by, it's going to be nine plus three. So that's going to give us 12. And if we plug in a negative one, we're going to have a negative one third and then minus that. So we have 12 minus, and it's going to be a minus four thirds. So that's going to be 12 plus four thirds. So that's going to be, you know, 13 and a third or, you know, 13.333, depending on how many decimal places or 40 over three, all depends on how you want to look at it. That's what your answer is going to be. All right, so let's pause there and we'll come back for some more.